let's talk psych for a second. Let's go over cognitive appraisal theory. So before I get started on this, let's just talk about a couple of things. One, um, this I think would be the first video of 2020, and two, on January 23rd, I am releasing my book, my first fantasy slash fiction novel, Real Magic. You guys can find that on Amazon, and the link to which you can kind of find below this, uh, this video here in the description stuff. You can also find info on it on my Facebook page, Magicology YT, and in the Magicology YT Facebook group. So like I said, let's get into some psychology here and we'll kind of talk about cognitive appraisal theory and why it is important to magic, mainly in getting into that state of mind that you need to be to change what you want to change with your magic. So I'm going to hop over to my notes. So the cognitive appraisal theory of emotion was pioneered by a guy named Richard Lazarus and is of particular importance to magicians. According to this theory, emotions manifest as a result of how we react to a given situation. First, we observe a situation, and then our thoughts about the situation activate a given emotion. So we have the stimulus, then our thoughts, and then the emotion. So in magic, what we are trying to do is manipulate our emotional state to raise energy to then command a change out here. So let me go on. Our physical actions have a direct impact on our emotions, too. For example, think of how you may feel more confident if you keep your back straight and stand up proud. Or everyone's kind of seen, like, the Wonder Woman pose, right? And that, or the Superman pose, right? Whichever. But there's been studies where people that strike that posture actually have an upbeat in their emotional state. So depending on how we actually move our bodies that can change how we feel. And we really want to manipulate how we feel to a high degree in a particular emotion during our spell work, right? Now, where was I? So your positive posture can have a positive impact on your emotions. In spell work, the actions that we take and gestures that we make are done to call upon emotions to fuel our magic. And I think one of my next videos I'm going to make is emotions and, and energy and fuel. Um, yeah, so... In my kinesthetic, kinesic magic system, I always mix that word up, the kinesic magic system, which you guys can find a little teaser to in Handy Sigil Magic, and the full system of it in Movement Magic, by the way. If you really like handle, Handy Sigil Magic, get the next level up, which is the Movement Magic book. I always see a lot of people either reading the Handy Sigil Magic book on uh, through, through Kindle, or Handy Sigil Magic is probably by far my bestseller. So if you guys want to up-level that, go for the Movement Magic book. Um, yeah. So the magician programs gestures and movements to activate emotions and their energy to power their spells. That's basically what um, Movement Magic is all about. Magic with our emotions is akin to a vehicle. Magic without emotion is akin to a vehicle without fuel. You might have the idea of getting somewhere or getting something done, but it ain't going to get done right? Have you ever, like, you know, you could try this, right? You could just drain everything out and zone out at a sigil. I want blah, blah, blah. My aim is blah, blah, blah. You know, it's doing anything without any oomph in it. You ever done something where you just don't want to do it and you're dragging your feet and whatever and it turns out crappy? That's why we need emotion. That's why we need fuel in our magic. Carrying on, if I can find my way back to my notes. So when you're going to perform spells, you need to act the part. Results will be null unless you act confident or you push for your result. Think fake it till you make it. So if at first you don't feel it, you got to have the posture. you got to have, you got to, you know, if you don't feel it on the inside, have the posture, have a strong voice. Any of these things that you can force yourself physically to do can help your emotions to pick up what your body is trying to tell it to do. So you're getting yourself in that state of mind in ritual, right? Ritual can be understood as a mean, means of acting. Like um, D.H. Thorne, one of my buddies, um, check out his channel too. He's got some great stuff. When it's almost Magic in ritual and stuff is almost like role play, right? When you step into that ritual chamber, temple, whatever you want to call it, 
you are telling the universe who's boss, so you better mean it and you better be proud, you know? If you ever stand up in front of a group of people and you're all like, like if you end up like, uh, anyone that's watched Avatar The Last Airbender, right? If you act like Sokka when he's going to give the speech about how the invasion is going to work and he ends up totally screwing it up, you don't want to act like that. You want to act like Sokka's dad, given the whole, this is what we're going to do, and this is how it's going to get done, yeah, right? Okay, anyway, yep, let me see. This is why it's important, it is important as someone who practices magic to work on eliminating self-doubt or other negative thoughts as they impede on your abilities to make things manifest. Your energies go where you think, so if your magic isn't working out for you, maybe because you have a lack of belief in your own abilities to get those things. So your belief can be changed and empowered, not 100%, but go with me, by your movements, by your own body's actions, right? So if you are supposed to get mad, put on a mad face. If you are trying to manifest something positive, force yourself to smile. They've done studies, I don't have an exact like reference or whatever, but where if you force yourself to smile, that can actually make you feel happy. Because there's this big confusion and there's a bunch of different theories around psychology of what happens first. Is it our body's response and then the emotion? Or is it our emotion and then our body does something about it? Lazarus likes to think one way, others think another way. So you got to think about it in this way, and this is why I bring up Lazarus's theory. Are you going to react to your environment or are you going to make your environment what you want? If you work magic, then you are taking on the responsibility of my environment and what happens is the way that I want it. So I, through my emotions, are going to command myself to command the world around me. Therefore, my emotions start first and then my actions and then the result. So if your emotions are not in line, you can backpedal a little bit and do the motions to get in the motions. Do the motions to kick up your emotions. Am I making any sense to you guys? Drop it in the comments and let me know if you guys have had experiences like this. Let's keep going here. So these could be the results of, so like, yeah, in terms of the, like the beliefs and negative beliefs and why stuff isn't exactly working out, could be the results of your subconscious bias against your own abilities and your ability to manifest results, which is why it's important to cultivate a positive self-image. You want to be able to walk into that ritual chamber or temple or what have you with a smile on your face, no, or a serious look on your face, whatever is needed with a, you know, part, you know, unless you have scoliosis or something, have a straight back and walk in there proud as shit and do your stuff, right? So you need to act the part to feel the part. I hope I'm drilling this in there. This doesn't mean that believing that you are superior to anyone else, but instead having the belief that you are perfectly capable of making anything happen if you want it to happen. So with this whole cognitive appraisal theory, you need to, it, co let's dissect cognitive appraisal. Cognitive brain appraisal, that's interpretation and stuff. So you need to interpret every situation, find the good in it, find the opportunity in it, judge it not by, oh, it's scary, or, oh, this is going to suck, or I don't know if this is going to work out. This is going to happen because I do magic, and my magic is going to will it to happen. You guys get it? Hopefully this wasn't too much of a rant, but I did want to make a video about this. So let me know what you think about it down in the comments, in my Facebook group. Join the Facebook page. You can find links and stuff to that down below. And at the end of this video, you guys can also check out all of my books and stuff. So on to the next video I'm recording today. Good hunting. Thanks for watching my video. So if you want to check out my playlists, I have, among others, The Simon Necronomicon, The Tree of Life, General Magic, Tulpamancy, a playlist on my books, The Elements, Stones, The Theories That Govern Magic, and the gods and goddesses of Mesopotamia. If you want to check out my books on Amazon, I have Creating Consciousness, Magical Mechanics, Magical Theater, Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Movement, which is an update and expansion upon Handy Sigil Magic, Magical Mastery, which is a combination masterwork of Magical Theater and Magical Mechanics, 
and The Guide to the Spheres and Beyond. You can also find me on Facebook at MagicologyYT. You can email me at priestofthenecro at gmail.com, and you can even check out my Instagram, which is Magicology. And good hunting.